The secret to a perfect finish is proper surface preparation. There's no way around it. If you want your project to have a nice even sheen, you need to prepare your parts consistently. But that can seem overwhelming when you're dealing with this many parts. In this video, I'd like to show you a very simple trick that I'm surprised more woodworkers don't use. I have all of these parts ready for finish. Let me show you as I catch up my last few parts. Now I'll assume many of you artisans out there a million boards to final thickness using a contemporary planer and then achieving your final surface prep with something like this dual action sander. If that's the case, you're gonna to need to remove all the marks from the planer. Depending on how sharp your planer blades are, you're gonna either start with 80 at 100 grit and then progress through the grits until you get to your final surface prep. If I'm applying a stain, I like to stop at 150. I find that this ensures an even distribution of the stain. If you're just using clear coat, you can go all the way up to one, excuse me, you can go all the way up to 220 if you wish. Uh, but I find when I've tried to stain pieces that were sanded to 220, I've gotten an uneven sort of blotchy distribution of the stain, especially using a penetrating stain like aniline dye. Now I wanna make sure that as I go through those grits that this board stays as flat as it was when it came out of the planer. I also wanna make sure that I get rid of all the marks from the previous grit so none of them creep up in my final finish. To ensure that, I'm gonna draw a diagonal grit pattern on the face of the board using a soft pencil. Don't use a mechanical pencil, it can leave scratches. Um, after I draw this pattern on, I'll take my dual action sander and I'll go horizontally across the face of the board, then vertically across the face of the board, and finally in opposing diagonal direction. I'll keep doing this until all of those marks are gone. This ensures that I've removed all of the marks from the previous grit so nothing creeps up in my final finish. If you're using a belt sander, you wanna keep your, grain, keep your sander in line with the grain direction. And if you're doing a more traditional finish, progressing from a scrub plane all the way up to a number four smoothing plane, perhaps a bullnose scraper, you might find this grid pattern helpful as well. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this and see how it works. Make sure that if you're using a sander that you have adequate dust collection or a dust mask. In this case, I have my dust collection built into my bench. If you'd like to see that bench build, I'll leave a link in the description below. Let me turn my dust collection on. Okay, so even though I've sanded over the surface essentially four times as I went horizontal, vertical, and opposing diagonals, I still have some remnants of my grid pattern here. That shows that I haven't removed all of the marks from the previous grid, and if I went ahead and put clear coat in it, I might see some swirl marks creep up. I'm gonna continue to sand with that pattern until all the grid marks are gone. This technique can also be really helpful when you're sanding small parts. I'd like to remind you out there that if you're using an orbital sander, you never wanna lean in with the front of the sander. To keep your surface flat, you wanna keep the pressure in line with your palm. This is the area that you're pressing down with and only pressing down lightly. That keeps your piece nice and flat. But when you're sanding small pieces, even, even when you take that extra effort to keep it flat, it can be very easy to roll off. So to prevent that, what I like to do is to gang my pieces up with a clamp and keep the head of the clamp lower than the surface of the piece. I'll then draw my grid pattern on and make sure that it goes all the way to the edge so that I can make sure that I'm hitting the entire surface. So let's take a look at how well that works. So the oak's a little harder, it took a lot more work to get to the same point I did with one pass with the walnut, but let's check out our results. So by clamping these boards together, I've kept the sander from tilting and causing an uneven edge. But this is where the grid mark really comes in handy on small parts. Sometimes you could have a small part that's very slightly bowed and you don't even see it. If you look here, I can see that I have some remnants of my grid marks. And then when I feel it, yep, I can feel that this board is a paper thickness above this board. Now I don't want to continue sanding until it gets rid of it because then I might cause my boards to be uneven. What I'll do instead is unclamp them and sand them separately. If I'm confident with my sander, I can hit it one last time. If I'm not so confident, I can take the same grit paper and put it on a sanding block to remove those grid marks. The grid marks have helped us ensure that we have an even surface with none of the swirl marks from our previous grit coming through in our final finish. Once I apply my first coat of stain, my first coat of finish, 
I don't need my grid marks anymore. As I progress through my finished grits of 220, 320, 400, and finally 4 rod steel wool, the way that the finish powders up will tell me exactly where I've hit and where I haven't. Hope you found this video helpful. I'm going to go ahead and continue on with my project. You go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see how it turns out. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to click that like button.